I will just uh, briefly uh, go for a, a case study now. It's regarding a patient of uh, type 2 diabetes, a 58 years old uh, male patient who is also uh, the diabetic, diabetic since uh, approximately four years. And he is obese with BMI of 32 kg per meter square. And he is hypertensive on lisinopril 40 milligram, but he, his uh, blood pressure is under control with 130 by 82, optimally controlled and having heart rate of 60 beats per minute. So he has been on medication, regular medication uh, with metformin 1000 milligram twice a day and lisinopril 40 milligram as I said, and along with met metoprolol uh, 100 milligram once a day and with high intensity atorvastatin 40 milligram once daily and aspirin 81 milligram QID because the patient also had uh, another comorbidity along with this diabetes and hypertension, uh, obesity. He also is a patient on uh, obstructive sleeve apnea. So uh, actually he has a multiple problem uh, of metabolic uh, defects, diabetes, obesity, hypertension, dyslipidemia, and obstructive sleep apnea. So our main concern should be to target uh, these metabolic uh, defects. So then um, I also have some other parameters of this individual. SBA1C at the moment is 8.3, EGFR of 70, and LDL of uh, 69, which is optimum for uh, the target and SDL of 35, which is below uh, expectation, uh, below the guidelines, and TG of 250 milligram deciliter, SGOT of 70, and uh, HPT is 100. So, patient is a case, otherwise, uh, from the parameters, I would say that patient is also having some uh, non alcoholic fatty liver disease. So, this would be uh, the target for uh, all of us. So, what, as you all of us know, that uh, type 2 diabetes is a complex disease uh, which is uh, gradually progressive and associated with other uh, cardiovascular risk uh, factors such as abdominal obesity, arterial hypertension, dyslipidemia, and thrombotic uh, status, low grade inflammation, and oxidative stress. These risk factors accelerate atherot uh, thrombosis results in cardiovascular disease, that is coronary heart disease, stroke and peripheral artery disease. Almost two thirds of patients with type two diabetes will die from cardiovascular disease and almost half from coronary artery disease. So a better management during the last two decades allowed reduction uh, in the incidence of cardiovascular complications, yet the residual risk remains high in patients with type 2 diabetes, CKD remains a concern and high heart failure becomes a complication of major interest, both at least partly due to the reduction in premature death among type 2 diabetes patients. What ADA recommendation is in 2019, CB protective agents as first add on in oral hypoglycemic agent in case of uh, ECVD in patients with type 2 diabetes. That's what. So, uh, so we are going to focus on this uh, uh, factor that we are more uh, uh, focusing on uh, cardiovascular disease. So what are the concerns now? One is I have to say that uh, I have to get uh, achieve the goal for diabetic medicine management means achieving HbA1c goal of 7, uh, less than 7.5, preferably 6.5% uh, HbA1c. My patient is uh, 58 years old male, which is considered as a young person. I think uh, and fixing a target of 6.5 uh, without uh, other comorbidities uh, uh, would be a preferable target for this patient. So, uh, so I would fix that target as 8.5. Presently, patient has as 8.3 uh, HbA1c, which is much above the target of uh, uh, 6.5 if I have to fix the uh, control uh, goal as 6.5. 
uh, I think I uh, I should fix at 6.5. For this, another problem that we have to be considerate about is the clinical inertia. Clinical inertia, which is which is from the caregivers which have uh, 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 problematic since many years, uh, because in some studies. Uh, uh, monotherapy is being considered as as soon as it is the function is exhausted and the second edition of the OHA uh, uh, being delayed as much as of three to four years. So which should be discouraged. So clinical inertia should be kept in mind and should be avoided. So fear of hypoglycemia, which is not going to be a, a problem in this uh, young uh, person and fear of weight gain, of course, this is this has to be um, considered uh, to a certain extent because patient is already having uh, obstructive sleep, sleep apnea, which is a major concern because this is an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease as well as uh, other metabolic uh, comorbidities. So, uh, another thing is patient is on metformin uh, up to a maximum of 2,000 uh, uh, milligram daily. That I think monotherapy should not be the target. I think what ADA recommends in 2020 is that in a high risk group from the word go, uh, we have to, we have, if there are multiple comorbidities, because we have to uh, somehow uh, address to cardiovascular disease. In such a situation, we have to uh, start dual therapy from the word go. Metformin on the one side and add one therapy with other seconds. And, and it was agreed and it was recommended in, uh, in uh, 2020, ADA recommendation is that one of the uh, uh, add-on therapy to metformin should be you know, one which has proven you know, cardiovascular safety as well as protective uh, uh, mechanism. So let us think uh, one such uh, combination of uh, therapy uh, would, what I would suggest here at this juncture is uh, because I have to uh, show the legacy effect of early control of blood sugar that uh, is quite beneficial in terms of the microvascular as well as macrovascular complications. So DCCT trial has already shown that the legacy effect, I have to uh, honor the, the legacy effect of DCCT as well as a UKPDS study. So uh, the, taking forward the, the, the information of UKPDS and DCCT trial, then I have to think uh, from the word go, if the SBA1C is, is supposing from the target level, if the SBA1C target level is more than 1.5%, then there is recommendation that dual therapy from the uh, word go should be the uh, motto. So what I suggest, uh, uh, for the timing, let me also say that uh, diabetes is uh, uh, is known by all the uh, experts that it has multiple defects, uh, not only the uh, uh, beta cells, but multiple uh, defects occurring. So we have to target as much as possible. The different angles uh, have to be targeted. That's why we it is known as ominous uh, octet that has to be targeted as far as possible. So uh, one such uh, agent uh, I would suggest here that uh, first line therapy with high risk individuals, I have to uh, decide uh, uh, the add-on therapy for what go, either uh, GLP-1 uh, receptor agonist or SGLT2 inhibitors to reduce uh, measure adverse uh, cardiac events, heart failure rate, or cardiovascular death, or progression of CKD. So I think uh, empaglifosin uh, uh, and the Lina combination has been targeted and that, that has been recommended uh, for the at least uh, for the initiation of therapy as well as add-on therapy. So I would suggest uh, one first uh, a combination is uh, apart from metformin, so uh, SGLT2 inhibitors and DPP4 inhibitor inhibitor combination. So SGLT2 inhibitor is a class of novel oral glucose lowering agent that mediates glucose lowering action by increasing urinary glucose excretion via inhibition of the sodium glucose 
co-transporter 2 in the proximal tubule of the kidney. The preferred effect is its ability to act independent of insulin secretion and action and render it suitable to administer at any stage of the disease course. Whereas DPP-4 inhibitor exerts its glucose lowering effect by the elevation of incretin hormones and subsequent augmentation of glucose dependent insulin secretion and inhibition of glucagon release. So combination of these agents has potential to show the additive glycemic control due to their complementary effects. Empagliflozin cardiovascular outcome event trial in type 2 diabetes mellitus patients Emparec outcome reported that three point mass outcome occurred in a significantly lower percentage in the empagliflozin compared to placebo on top of standard care. In addition, the cardiovascular safety of linagliptin DPP-4 inhibitor was further elucidated in Carmelina and Carolina trials. So HbA1c decrements by Empalina 25 uh, over 5 mg has demonstrated 1.81% HbA1c reduction at HbA1c baseline of 6.5% at 24 weeks in metformin-treated groups. The benefits on glycemic control were maintained at week 52 in metformin treated groups and higher percentage of patients achieving HbA1c less than 7% were reported for combinations. The combination offers a suitable component in strategy to achieve target HbA1c without increased risk of hypoglycemia and weight gain with improvement in overall overall lipid profile, a reduction in the incidence of genital infection associated with uh, HGLT2 inhibitor has been reported when DPP-4 inhibitor is added, perhaps because of a better glucose control, although other possible mechanisms remain to be investigated. Uh, just to summarize, in this case, Empagliflozin and linagliptin combination provides a robust HbA1c reduction and uh, two to four times higher odds of patients reaching the goal of HbA1c compared to individual agents with low hypoglycemic risks. Thank you so much.